Welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we are joined with some friends of ours. We got Eric, we got Russ, we got Bill. And we are here. Friends is a strong word, but. <laughs> that's fair. Opponents. <laughs> yes, opponents. <laughs> that's, that's the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> so we're here at Bug Guy Game Fest. We've just completed kind of a. A, a learning kind of first game of successes, fourth edition, which was just put out by Phalanx. This is a game that's been around the block a few times, had a number of iterations, but it's designed by um, Richard Berg and Mark Simonich. This is a anywhere from two to five player, kind of a multiplayer card driven game about the wars um, for for the succession of Alexander the Great's kind of empire, so to speak. So we played this five player. Basically, you've got uh, you know Greece and Turkey and part of the Middle East and North Africa, and all of that's carved up between various different factions. And you are playing your cards for operations, for events to move around, control regions in a similar fashion to something like Hannibal and Hamilcar, or Caesar Rome versus Gaul. You're controlling regions to get victory points, and there's a lot of other extra kind of. Alexander the Great Macedonian level Chrome, where you're trying to control various heirs to win insta victories during the game, or you're trying which to... Which is how Eric won, Yes, right? yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that you can get prestige from, um, you know, having Alexander's tomb buried in your kind of major city that you control, but you have to, like, get the funeral cart and, like, steal it and send it over to your lands. There's a lot of other kind of moving pieces in this as well. So we just wanted to kind of sit down and kind of put out our first impressions and thoughts because we played the five-player game. Um, the five-player game, from what I can tell, is only two turns long, but that's still not a particularly short game. We played only one turn and then we had instant victory conditions at the end and that took about, with learning, probably two and a half hours, I would say. And so I just kind of want to put it out there. What did everyone think of this? It was really a lot of fun. Like I said during the game, it, it reminded me a little bit of Washington's War because of all the political yep. control markers, but with the caveat that combat here is a little bit more encouraged than you definitely see in Washington's yes. War. Uh, the map gives us a lot of space to move out in, uh, although there are a lot of choke points that, uh, that uh, trip, trip me up over on this side here where I couldn't take the big armies through. So, uh, But yeah, a good time. And Russ? I, I would agree. Um, very, very similar to, to Washington's war with that political control, but this has got, again, kind of period-specific things, sieges of towns that are can really soak up your turns, um, yeah, die rolls, if they're not your friend, you're going to be there sieging for a couple turns, possibly, uh, soaking up your, your dudes. Um, there's yeah, I think my siege took four turns. Yeah. Did yours take... Two? I had two, but I had a Bill. I, you did a good I one. Card quick. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, it two to four turns is what it's going to take you. You know, and that's that general. And the difference between those two things is very yeah. intense. Yeah, yeah. That, that general's now stuck there, and you know he's not protecting control or going and getting more control out there. He could be whittled away while he's busy trying to take this one this one city. So. And you don't want to break and abandon the siege because then you lose all your yeah, accumulated siege points you do exactly. have. Yeah. So, so once you're in it, you're in it to win it. <laughs> yeah, right. and you're like, you've got to kind of commit to that. Mm -hmm. Eric, any thoughts? The victor? The, uh, yeah. Hail the glorious <laughs> victor? By sheer uh, blind squirrel catching that one. Uh, the, the setup is very asymmetric. And then yes. with the cards that you're given, particularly in the five player, you're only playing eight cards yes so the asymmetric start kind of wants to guide your strategy and then you get the cards that may or may not work with that so i feel like it'd be a different game every time you play it mm -hmm. very much so yep. and then you know even with different play accounts the setup is so different and the game length is so different you're going to have if you play this two player and you play the whole thing very different from what we experienced playing the five player game as well uh, one thing that I was that I was impressed with is because we set it up and it was like yeah this is only two turns long and I was like oh is this going to be disappointing because we got everyone together and it's like we're going to play eight cards but I was surprised at how much stuff we did with eight cards we didn't even play eight because we just played the one turn but you know you you have the surrender phase where you do some little bits and then you play your card for either the ops or the event and you're executing those then you have activation where you can move your generals which you may have already done some in the movement phase if 
or in the card phase if you played like a major campaign. So you, I was like, you actually do quite a lot, or you can do at least it on, on your turn. So I felt like I was at least, we spent a good amount of time on this, and I wasn't just like, I play a couple cards and do something, and it was, it didn't, it didn't like fall flat and feel like we like barely did anything. No, yeah. I still feel like we did kind of a lot, all things considered. It was one turn and someone won. But and in this five player setup, we were really at each other's throats from the get go because basically the 30, 40 years before we had built our empires yes. that came into conflict. So I think we all felt a great deal of tension. I remember early on, I think it was Russ said, well, everybody can attack me and you're absolutely right. Bill and I both kind of went for some of your places, and I, to me, that's good when you can create that kind of feeling that, oh, what am I going to do, and how am I going to do what I do, but also protect what I've got? Because it does me no good if I capture Rhodes and get all those VP, and then somebody waltzes in and, and takes it. So understanding that, putting that together in a cogent defense, I, I like that. that that's kind of the way I think and the way I like playing the games. But I agree with you. There's a lot of meat on this bone. Oh, yes. A For lot. only four cards a turn, I felt like we did a lot. And, and I think early on I was like, oh, it's only four cards. What am I going to do? That was not the case. There's a lot to do. Yeah, you play other CDGs where you have a hand of like seven or eight cards. Right. And it's like, oh, I do a whole bunch. Here it was like four. And that's yeah. usually a sign that it's going to be a short one. But with everyone doing things, there's constantly stuff in your empire and your little faction makes progress and does a lot of stuff over the course of the game, regardless of how long or short it is, which was, that was really cool to see as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the hallmarks of Simonich and Berg are all over this game. I, you know, it's been around for a long time. When I think of Simonich's games, things like Hannibal and Hamilcar and Caesar, Rome versus Gaul, all of all of a lot of those mechanics are still here. Yeah, you can see it actually in the in the look of the game from the circular cities and the yes. it, it it really feels like Rome, Caesar versus Gaul and and and, and you Hanna know, Hannibal and Hamilcar. You've got yeah. to control a number of cities within the region. Mm -hmm. You get the region card. You get points from that. Very similar type of concepts there. That's all over it. And then I think about uh, a game we played called Genesis by Richard Berg. Very different period and style, but it's a big multiplayer game and everyone's different factions and it's kind of a free-for-all. And it's ancient. So. And I got a similar type of feel from that where, you know what, some guys are stronger than others. Mm -hmm. Some guys have very different capabilities and that level of asymmetry is rooted in the history and Berg famously was like, yeah, I'd rather have the history than like balance. Balance it. So yeah, like yeah. in that game, like yeah. one of the factions like will always lose. But like that's what historically happened. We didn't care about that. Well, and we had that conversation because I think. And what was your? Uh, you didn't really have a country. It was an heir. They 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 are named, but okay. like, I think he was the Seleucids. Okay. Was uh, you place. had fairly powerful armies, yep. and I think all of us were kind of shaking in our boots. But the reality is, you can evade. Yep. You can kind of dodgy, dodgily move around. Yep. You can kind of avoid that. So I, I actually found that, once again, to be a challenging puzzle. How am I going to move here to get out of the, aren't these called transition zones or yeah, something? Transient, 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 transient. I mean, it's basically deserts. <laughs> yeah. that, that's yeah. basically what they are. So if you move through there, you lose, uh, you go through attrition. I think you roll a die and you can lose a guy or something like that. Was it, or did you, you automatically just, You always lose a guy so if you have more than three. That was very... Yeah. Bad, but it was it was cool to think. How am I going to get away from Russ, and how am I going to stay away from him? But then I'm also trying to kind of play cat and mouse, where I'm like, come after me, uh -huh. come over here, because I don't want you doing what you're supposed to be doing. I, I love games like that, and I think that that is here very heavily. Yeah, and it's like all of these kind of free for all style games. You're dogpiling the person who's in front, mm -hmm. and then once they're completely dogpiled, there's a new leader, and you have to pivot to dogpile them as well. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> at some point, and then someone, someone claws to the top of the pile, sneaks like, and literally win. sneaks in through the back. Yeah, 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 and wins. And that, I enjoy that style of game. You get a little bit of chaos. You get a, a lot of friction in this game. No one is safe. No one's like I'm the turtle faction, where you can't touch me or reach me. Everyone is on each other's doorsteps. Even Bill, who is kind of over in the corner. He's has, Australia. He has there, a right? huge yeah. front line with Russ, and, you know, it's only one opponent, but it's one of you know, the strongest opponent starting in this one. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm, like, probably a little bit safer from Russ, but I've got Eric right on my doorstep, and I've got Egypt. I've got you kind of 
jumping up uh, into into kind of Crete and threatening. Everyone's threatening, threatened by someone, and so you're never you're never safe. And the, ma the majority of the victory points are coming from who owns the provinces. Yes. So you can't sit back and play passive. You have to go after things. Uh, and if you can't control all the provinces, go after the few auxiliary victory points that there are. And that's. I, it's such an easy, I love the system because it's such an easy way to kind of force people and to promote people to go and do combat. We played a lot of kind of Civ Builder style games where you're like disincentivized to do combat because I can just build my economy. You don't have an economy in the same way, it's just victory points for geographical regions. You have to go out and get victory points, otherwise you will lose. So I will build guys and I will go out and fight because you can't win any other way. And, I, and I, I like that this system encourages that so that you get a real war game and not someone build a bunch of factories and wins. That's always, that's always like, okay. It's not, it's not as war gamey. This one really prompts you to go and do that. So I like that a lot. Would you guys play it again? Absolutely. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I think I feel the same way. And there's a reason that this has had so many additions, and you know we're starting to see some of that. The rule book's pretty big. It's pretty intense. The play aids are very detailed, but very, very small. useful. They're very good. Get your magnifying glasses out, though. It's a lot yeah, of text. Yeah. Don't let it scare you off. The components are incredible. Your bifocals. Yes. <laughs> Your bifocals. Or readers. <laughs> Phalanx knocked it out of the park with their production. Oh yeah. It's beautiful to play with. And how many people over the past two days where we had this? Set up came over and was just like, ooh, yeah, have yeah. a look. And it was, they were like, oh, I got this, I got the first edition out one hell on my shelf at home. Oh, I remember playing that game and loved it. And it just ogled the nice production that we've got here as well. Yeah. But yeah, I would absolutely play this again, and I want to to kind of get more of this because now we kind of learned the rules mm -hmm. and have experienced some of it. Going a bit, you know, doing it again, everyone's going to be a bit more. <laughs> tactically sound in doing yeah. things and you make choices which might be a bit more well and I, i'm also interested for us to do the two-player yes. variant because it will be very different and, and we'll start probably earlier almost a different game yeah because really. you're working more with legitimacy i think in the early scenarios yes. right and then and so like in the early scenarios you're trying to gain your keep your legitimacy or kind of grow that there's a number of changing victory, auto victory conditions. In different rounds, you're trying to go and control the direct air of Alexander, and if you can do that and have certain levels of legitimacy and victory points, you win, like auto, but that changes. Round two, different person. Mm -hmm. And so, if you don't quite pull it off, you, you can you try know, next you committed to this, you've got to, you've got to move and try and do something else. Mm -hmm. So I think there's going to be a lot of um, variability and change in, in, in the course of a game. Which yeah. you always love a game with a good story as well. So that I had a blast playing this, and I'm very grateful that everyone played with us. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time to do that. And, and Russ, you have your own written blog, yes. Cardboard Conflicts. I do. So Thank check you. Russ's stuff out. I know he has a lot of good uh, posts. I, I kind of like me a long time ago. I think I wrote stuff on everything, and it was it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. So keep keep up the good work, and it's been good to interact with you on. Twitter and, and other Slack and other things. So and Eric, I believe, is opening a game cafe soon. Yeah. Correct. So advertise that to the good people. Around and the board game cafe. It's in Plainwell, Michigan, just north of Kalamazoo. We're on Facebook and we have a website. So and he's got war games. Yeah. And we have war games. Lots of coin as well, yeah. right? Correct. Yeah. And Bill, what do you have? Nothing. I, I hang out in other people's slacks. <laughs> we, just, we just appreciate you coming and playing with us. And we're a, it was a great time. I love playing these big multiplayer games. Well, that's why we love coming to conventions. It's half well, the reason we do this. I want to say something about Bill. I, I, I watched you guys play Salerno and you're that rules guy. I feel like you literally are the guy that remembers yep. the little details. And I appreciate it. I, I think that's an important part of war games because how many little exceptions are there? Yeah. Half and the time I remember them correctly, too. Yeah, right, right, yeah. well, you know. <laughs> nobody's purchased more than most. <laughs> but yeah, great to play with you guys. Thank you. Yes, thank so, you guys. So that was like kind of some first thoughts about Successes, fourth edition from Phalanx. Check it out if you're interested. There'll probably be more of this coming to the channel soon. So thanks again, once again, for playing. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Appreciate you tuning in. I've been Alexander from PlayersAid.com. And I'm Grant.